Good morning, everyone. It's so good to be with you again on a Monday morning to share a few thoughts with you. Uh, we've been going through Lent, and we saw that the story of Lent uh, began in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve gave up their access to the Tree of Life, and they chose instead to have the knowledge of good and evil. Well, because of that one choice, the whole world fell. Because in order to know good and evil, we would experience pain, sadness, tragedy, death, all of that came upon us and we were shackled, locked into that choice that they made and we could never escape. So God gave us three keys and we've talked about those three keys to get out of those shackles. The first key was faith, which is the access to grace. Um, where there was no road out, Jesus created a path. It leads back to him because he is the tree of life. The second key was hope, the living out of our grace that we have by faith. Faith is confirmed by a life that shows that we live for our hope of eternal life rather than this world. And the third and final key is love, the sharing of that grace. Jesus loved us, so he died to offer us grace. Our love demonstrates our willingness to give of ourselves so that others may know his grace. So. Now, I want to move to the book of Ephesians, to the fifth chapter of Ephesians, where Paul tells us what happens in our lives when those shackles come off. When, by faith, hope, and love, the shackles are broken, what happens in, in, in our lives? And the first thing he says is that we become light rather than darkness. So let's look at uh, Ephesians 5, 8. He says this, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. I want you to notice first and foremost um, that he doesn't say that we were living in darkness or that we existed in darkness. He says very specifically, we were darkness. We were darkness. And we should understand that in reality, there is no such thing as darkness. Darkness doesn't exist. Darkness actually means nothingness. Darkness is the absence of anything else. Darkness is not only specifically the absence of light, but it's the, it's the absence of anything. It has no properties. It has no qualities to define it. Light exists as created energy and is defined by the elements that make it up, but darkness means nothingness. Darkness cannot overcome light because as soon as light appears, darkness ceases to exist. So by saying we were darkness, Paul is really saying that, that we were nothing. We were nothing. In the same chapter, in verse 6, he says, we were children of disobedience, deserving of nothing except the wrath of God. So Paul is equating darkness with disobedience. God created us as children of light, but through disobedience in the garden, we became nothing, we became darkness, unable to do anything to get back to the light. But in John 1, 5, it speaks of Jesus saying, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. See, darkness cannot overcome light, but you know, it's really interesting, the smallest light will shine in the darkness. No matter how great or how vast that darkness is, the smallest candle in the greatest darkness will shine a light and the darkness cannot overcome it. So when we accept the key by faith in Christ, we don't just receive light, we become light. We become a candle, we become a light that shines in the darkness. And we do that by choosing obedience over disobedience. Choosing by faith to become light is not the end of the story. Paul says by faith we must walk as children of the light. And the contrast is to the idea that we are not to walk as children of disobedience. See, the first key was faith, the second was hope. And hope is the living out of that grace through obedience. By faith, we move from being darkness to being light. And in hope, we live each moment as children of light. 
So here's the thing. If darkness is nothing, then living in darkness is doing nothing. And if darkness is disobedience, then doing nothing is disobedience as well. You see the logic there? See, we usually define disobedience as doing the forbidden, as breaking the law, of doing what we've been told not to do. But we don't think about it as not doing what is right to do. In other words, if, if, uh, if you parents tell your children, don't do this, that, or the other thing, and they go ahead and do it, then they've been disobedient. But if you tell your children, clean your room, or clean the house, and they don't do it. That lack of activity, that doing nothing, is disobedience as well. So if we are to be God's light, we must explore our lives each day and ask if we are being obedient, doing all God wants us to do, all he has commanded us to do, all he has asked us to do for his kingdom and his glory. So in your prayers today, I would ask you to do this. Maybe in your life you feel that you're not being real disobedient. Maybe there's not a lot of ways in your life you look and you say, well, gee, here's a, a lot of things that God told me, you know, not to do, and I'm not doing them. I, I, I'm not doing a lot of things that I think God has forbidden. But isn't it just as disobedient if I don't do or refuse to do things that God has told me to do, God has asked me to do? or that I'm supposed to do? Consider such things. As you pray today, ask yourselves, what are some of the things in my life that I know God wants me to do that I just haven't been doing? That I've been doing nothing. And in that nothingness, it becomes disobedience. In your prayers today, think about that. And ask God to help you find ways to be obedient and be the light. God bless you guys. Have a great day.